Hi, welcome to some projects um, with using two and a half inch strips with Gourmet Quarter. So I'm Susan Clare, the Gourmet Quarter, if you're not familiar with me. And I have a website, gourmetquarter.com, and you can buy the patterns plus many other patterns for these uh, projects from the website if that interests you. So we're doing two and a half inch strips. And we've already done a few, we're doing 20 projects with two and a half inch strips and we are now on to project number eight, so we've already done a few. So today I'm going to show you, uh, if you've already signed up to receive the pattern, you will have a pattern that you can download and print, something like this. And today I'm going to show you how to make a pencil case. Now, I know it's a pencil case because it's got pencils on it. It's always a giveaway, isn't it? So we have a zipper top. We've got a nice little handle to carry it around. We've got a nice little flat base on it. It's got a different colour on one side to the other side. Of course, if you're making yours, you can make whatever colour you like. But that's what I'm doing with mine. So I can kind of think that's quite a cute little pencil case. So we'll just get started. So what we have to do initially is make the little pencil blocks. So I've got a little block here. Um, and we need eight, there's eight pencils, four on each side. So I've already made some of them, but I just thought I'd go through with you just how to make it, just to make sure that you understand the pattern. So it tells you all the cutting and everything in the pattern. So I've gone ahead and joined up my three pieces that make up the pencil. So this is kind of like the piece of timber on a pencil and then the lead and the pencil. So we're matching the colors there. And then we just need to pop some corners on to give us that nice little look of it being a nice sharp pencil. So I've got my pieces already cut here and um, we can mark probably just finger pressing is enough on a small square like this. We're just going to stitch diagonally and then trim off the little corners. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that and finish this little block off. So I've already stitched those three bits together and now over this um, little strip end I'm going to just sew these on. So just sewing straight on that diagonal line across the square. And then we just need to trim off the corner, just leaving a quarter inch seam on there. So just putting my quarter inch line right over the seam line. Trim that away and then we just need to press that. So we're pressing the seam into the corner, into the triangle. Then we come back and we do the same thing on the other top corner. So I'm just positioning that and I'm just going to sew from here across to here. We've nearly done our little pencil block, it's so cute. And same thing, we're going to just trim that seam and press and there's our little block done. So even though I had to sew those other little strips together before, it still doesn't take all that long to make this little block. It's very cute. We need to have, as I said, eight of them because we've got four on each side of the pencil case. So I've already gone ahead and made up one side with four pencils in it, so now I need to make this one up here. So I've got my four pencils and just think about your colours with whatever colour your surround is, whether they um, stand out nicely against them or whether they, you know, if you, if you had a things like that blue, I probably wouldn't put that blue against that, partly because the design is the same on the fabric, but also because the colour will tend to merge. So you put the brighter colours or the, the more contrasting colours together and that helps these other colours pop out quite nicely. So as I said, everything for cutting is in the pattern. So we just need to join this whole row up with the ends on and then this piece goes on top. And then we're going to be joining them both together uh, with a base piece. On here, there's a different piece of fabric through here. So we're making this whole piece up in, into one. So I'll, And I'm using this bright green for that. So I'll sew that. So I'm going to go ahead and sew all of that together. That's fairly straightforward. When we put the pencils together, we should just press those seams open because they're a little bit bulky at those points there. So other than that, that's quite straightforward. I will be back shortly. So I've gone ahead, I've sewn my whole piece up. It's kind of looking quite fun just the way it is now. It's actually square now, so that's really good. Um, 
everything's looking really nice. I've gone ahead, I've pressed these seams open because I think that they sit better open. Other than that, everything's looking great. So what we can do now is start preparing the zipper. We're putting a zipper in the top. And so I've got my zipper, it, my zipper's longer than I've said in the pattern. It doesn't matter if it's too long because we're going to be chopping some of it off. So I've suggested, because we're using two colours um, on the outside of the pencil case, I've suggested we also use two colours on the zipper end. So what we're going to do is cover these ends. So I think probably the easiest way to start with is to stitch across, open the zipper out a bit and then bring them back together again so that they're level and then just stitch across that just to hold it because then we want to stitch some fabric on it and it's easier if it's already holding itself together before we do that. So I'm just going to go to the machine and just stitch across and it's just a holding, it doesn't need to be anything particular other than stitched and held together. And so then on, on one end I want to put a piece of fabric either side of the zipper and I want to stitch across there and I'm going to stitch a couple of times just this time to make sure that it's secure and it doesn't have to be right on top of our stitching but right just near it is convenient and then we're going to be flipping that back so it just puts a nice end on the zipper so I'll go ahead and stitch across there with the zipper between and it's held together because we've done that little holding stitching And I'm going to turn around and come back over that again just to make sure. So when you're stitching over things like zippers just take it slowly and it doesn't cause any problems at all. Um, it doesn't matter too much if you take a little bit of a larger seam allowance like I have there because we're going to be trimming all that off because we're going to take that back there and now we're going to do another line of sewing maybe an eighth of an inch away just to tidy that up nicely and it just helps it sit nice and flat there. So that's all we need to do with that end. We need to do the same thing at the other end and we're using the other colour for the other end. Before we go and do that though we can just trim this off just back to sort of the quarter inch or so just to get that excess zipper out of the way. So the pattern tells you um, um, the measurement of where we want to put the other end. So we just want to, again, we'll make a mark, perhaps even a pin just to get started because this one is held together. As long as your zipper pulls within, <laughs> between, that is the main thing. You don't want your zipper pulled down out of the way because you've got to be able to open and close that zipper. Um, so we just need to position this one in exactly the same way above and below after we've measured the point and turn it back just the same. So I'll go ahead and do that and come back and show you what we're going to do with it next. So I've gone ahead and I've put both ends on my zipper here. It's the right length. I know that it's going to fit here nicely. Now I did just trim off just a little bit to make it the same size as my top and you trim it at each end so that it's evenly spaced. And then I've got my, or the outside of the pencil case here, I've sat it on the batting and I've set the lining behind. And that's because I want to trim the batting and the lining are just a touch bigger than the front. And I, that's because I want to trim them, I want them to trim them the same size as the front. Um, so we'll just do that fairly quickly and then I'll show you how to start putting that zipper in. So I find it, I'm using this uh, thin batting and it's gripping to the cotton fabric really nicely. So what I want to do now is take the backing off again, the, sorry, the lining, leave the batting behind the outside and we're going to lay the, the zipper piece along this edge. So we've got an even edge of batting and the top of the pencil case we want to lay this down now you need to decide which way you want it if there's a right or wrong side on the zipper if you want this side with the handle out here and the zipper pull up this end on this color or this color now is the time to make that decision 
I'm going to make mine so that that is that side. So what we need to do is lay this, as I said, I just trimmed this evenly either end so that it matched the same length. It's just a little bit easier to work with. And we're going to position that so that the zipper edge is also level with that raw edge. So these are a little bit uh, longer and that's okay, they're not really a problem. And we can pop a pin in there, but pop it in that way because we also want to put the lining on. So this is now right side down, so right sides together with the two fabric pieces. And this one is going to go in here. So we probably need to pop a zipper foot on the machine. And I'm just going to pop another couple of pins in just so that things don't move around too much because they have a little habit of moving when you're not watching. So everything should now be the same length and we're just going to stitch all the way along here and that includes then the zipper in there. So the zipper's right side down against that, this is right sides to that and it all lines up along there. So I've got my zipper foot on but just before I start the other thing we should do is just move the zipper pull out of the way for the time being. We'll need to stop and move it back again because it, it makes too big a bump and it makes it really hard to sew past. So we just want to get a, give ourselves a chance to have a, a good go at the sewing before we need to move that. So I'm just sewing, I'm gauging a quarter of an inch away from the edge so it doesn't matter if it's not absolutely exact but try and keep it straight. So I'm coming up and I can start to feel that zipper pull in my way. So I'm just going to leave the needle down, raise the foot, and just get in here and get that zipper pull and pull it back to where we've just sewn so that now that it, it's out of our way and sitting quite happily up there, not causing us any trouble at all. And now I can continue on going all the way to the end just with that quarter inch seam. So I will show you when I get to the other end how we do the next side. So I've gone ahead and I've just finished that line of sewing that I was doing. We can trim these little bits off as well, but I think it's also a good idea at this stage just to press as we go. It just helps everything later because it gets a little bit hard to get into later on. And so I'll press this edge down as well. So it's looking pretty good already. Zip in there. So I'm going to just open that out again and and I'll just trim those off so I don't forget. So we don't really need them in there, it's just extra bulk in the corner. So what we now need to do is bring this side of the zipper right side down again to this edge. So we're doing much the same thing as we've just done, but we have to bring, this just gives us a really nice finish on the zipper, uh, on the inside of a pencil case. So I'm going to bring that a, a, there, so that's all sitting nice along that edge again. I can just pop those couple of pins in just to make sure. And then we're just going to bring the lining up so it's, it, this is the right side of the lining, again, so, uh, so it's right side down, and stitch along that edge there. So we've got the lining there and we've got all this sitting here. So the only time it's going to get a little bit tricky is when we've got to get our hand in to move that zipper pull, which we will need to do. So I'm going to pull it back. Um, oh, I don't need to pull it back yet. Once we get closer, then I can pull it back nearer this end so that you can get your hand in as you're sewing. So. I'll just get this ready and I'll go ahead and stitch this same side, just the same as we've just done. So I've finished that seam, it's looking a little strange at the moment, however, it's all going to be okay. So I'm actually just going to put my hand in and open the zipper. And what we want to do is turn this out <laughs> the right way it's more or less in a tube at the moment and then we can pop that lining because the zipper's open we can push that lining in there and everything is sitting really nicely so 
that's how that's gone in. We've got one end to match here and one end to match that side. Um, I'm, I'm just going to try and press that a little bit so it gets a little bit hard to press as you can see. That's why I pressed the other bit when I could. And so if we just uh, flatten it out a little bit we should be able to just press it carefully from this side at least. We can turn it inside out and press the other side if we want to as well. So that's all sitting quite nicely in there. And so we're pretty much ready now to start doing the next stage. So what we now need to do is we can make our handle and get that ready and also we're just trimming the sides at a bit of an angle on here as well. So just make sure all your lining is sitting nice and flat inside. And this is where a thinner batting really helps because you don't want it to be all bunching up because of the fat batting. So we want to lay it so that the, the zip is sitting right along the top and this should be sitting evenly down the bottom because we're going to trim it. Um, the pattern tells you how much to measure for trimming and things. I'm just going to go ahead and trim it here now. So it's just taking that corner off there and the same thing at this end, just move the zipper pull out of the way. And that is looking pretty amazing. So now we need to make the handle and the tab that's, oops, here we go. This little bit and this little bit. So I've already got my piece of fabric ready to do that. It's just a strip and we've just folded the raw edges into the middle and then folded it over. And I just need to do a row of stitching either side, about an eighth of an inch in, to make that. And then we're just going to cut a shorter length off for the tab and then the main part is for the handle. So I'll go ahead and get that all stitched and cut and ready to show you the, the next bit. So this is the one side and this is the other side. So I've gone ahead, I've got my handle and the little tab ready and I've just clipped them in place. So you could pin them, you could stitch them in place. If you've got a little free arm on your machine, you could stitch them just to the front. Don't go putting it to both because what we now need to do is um, turn it inside out. But open your zipper at least halfway before we do this because we need it open so that once we've stitched the side seams, we can turn it back out again. So we're just going to turn it inside out, make sure that these bits are sitting still as they were. And this is fairly close at the top here, but there's room for a little seam allowance there. And you can see that everything is sitting well. Try and match these, uh, the, the base at the bottom there. And then we're just going to stitch down that line there and exactly the same on this side. And so I'll get this ready and I'll go ahead and I'll just do that straight stitch and then I'll show you um, it's really nothing hard about doing a straight stitch as long as you've got everything in place. So at this stage you could use that, that clip to make sure that it's going to stay exactly where it is by clipping both bits together now for the handle and the tab so that things don't move when you're not watching. So they'll be fine. So we're just going to do the two side seams now, right from the top down to that bottom corner. So I've done one side, I'm just doing the second side. Just making sure everything's sitting well and it's sitting really nicely. And we don't need to do a little back stitch at this end because we're going to be chomping those corners off in a minute. So that's looking pretty good but I think what we should now do is just these seams are going to sort of be staying there so I, what I would now do is overcast them so if you've got a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine um, then I would suggest you do that. So I'm just going to trim the seam. I'm not really trying to make it any smaller but just nice and tidy so that I can zigzag right over the edge and it just makes for a nice finished seam on the inside. Both and I'll set my machine up to do zigzag and I'll just zigzag down the side. So I'll go ahead and, and do that and then show you the next bit. So I'm just zigzagging up the side here. So I've just got my open toe foot on. I've got a zigzag stitch on the machine 
uh, nothing special about it. I'm just so that m most of the stitch is on the fabric and then it swings to just off and it just gives that edge a nice finish. Stops a little bit spraying and that just finishes that edge off quite nicely um, and by trimming it first like we did you get a nice edge to zigzag to. So that's all looking pretty good. So what we now have to do is do something with the corners. So we're going to open the corners out so that we're sitting with this seam as central to this point as we possibly can and we're going to stitch across that corner just with a straight stitch and then we and then we can trim it and then zigzag that little seam as well so we're going to do that with both the corners and that will just give us this nice what we call a little paper bag corner so have this seam coming up the center of the V that it makes and then stitch across and it will all work out fine so I'll go ahead and do that and I'll just trim it off and I'll zigzag that while I'm here as well. So when I'm doing something like this I might start just a little bit in from the edge and back up so that any little threads and things are, are nice and tidy in there. So that's going to look hopefully pretty good by the time we, we turn that out. And yes, it's looking pretty good. So we've got a nice, I haven't done the other side yet, but I'll go ahead and do that in a minute. So we've got a nice little um, corner just sitting down there, which gives us a nice base for the pencil case. So I'll go ahead and do the other side and then show it to you all finished. So I've finished both my corners. It's exciting. Time to turn it out and have a look. So I'm going to keep all my pencils. I have a few pencils. So that's all sitting pretty well. Now that's going to be a little bit tight on these uh, corners where the zipper is, so you just push it out the best that you can up there and I think it'll sit quite reasonably. It just makes it a little bit of a, a lump in the corner, but I think it sits fine. So I'll just see if I can push it a little bit further with something not too sharp. I think that's looking pretty good actually. Yep, I'm happy with that. So we can push our little corners out there. And here we have a fun looking green bottomed pencil case with a handle. And so you can hold the handle to pull, you can hold the tab to pull it closed, you can carry it around. It does not have to have pencils in it. However, it has pencils on the outside of it. So I thought that was a little bit of fun. We've uh, got a couple of different colorways going on here. I think a thin batting definitely helps with something like this. And it's a great way to pop a zipper in because we haven't, even though it's a little bit tight on those corners, that's a whole lot better than trying to mess around with the, the actual teeth and things there as well. So that was a strip idea number eight. So I will see you again with an idea number nine.